Zero. The uh, motion is agreed to. Shall the bill? Mr. Speaker. Gentleman from uh, Henry, Mr. Armstrong. Speaking to the bill. Gentleman has the floor. No, I mean, no. Uh, the hour is late. I don't have any 10 minute speeches. I've got a two minute speech. Um, you know, this may not be, I mean, this is a second year budget, not a two year budget, and we've dealt with maybe more issues, but I don't recall in 20 years of maybe seeing a more striking contrast between the two sides of the aisle in this budget. And, you know, while, yes, we've repeated the message today that transportation is important, but I'm not prepared to take from children, from mental health, from schools, from police, in order to fund it. I mean, and that's what, that's what this is about. You distill this down, and that's what this vote is about. Now, can we use roads? Of course. You know, 58's been bandied about here today, but there's another road, I-73. I mean, we're 20 percent unemployment. Heaven help us. Those roads would help. But no, you can't take funding from schools, and from mental health, and from police in order to do it. Now, you know, it's late and everybody's getting testy and everybody wants to go home, but there's the contrast. There's the difference. There's where we disagree. Now, I know this is the first step in the great kabuki dance that is the budget. But this first statement is just that, it's a statement of what we believe in, what we set as the priorities for this common wealth. There were amendments that were pulled that dealt with Medicaid reimbursement, 599 funds, with education. But in the end, it comes down to passage or not, a green light or a red light. Do you agree with this or do you disagree? Mr. Speaker, I have to vote against this budget, and I would urge the members of, the, of this body to vote against this budget and stand up for school kids and mental health and police and everything else that we hold dear in this Commonwealth. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.